you mentioned, there is a huge geriatric care component that is also being overlooked, where India probably has much more to offer than we realize. Uh, can you um, uh, uh, tell us a little more about the potential of this uh, ger geriatric, uh, geriatric care segment? Well, uh, to put it uh, in a very brief manner, if you look at our cultural values, we look after our elderly. Even though in the urban centers in India, this is dying out due to space and time constraints. But in the West, the elders are suffering because the state or the insurance companies that used to look after them, not their younger generation, are running out of funds and resources to look after them. So that is one very major chunk of expenditure by any government or any state, which is looking out for solutions. Now, if companies and healthcare providers can outsource the back office functions to India, call centers to India, why not the care centers themselves? I'll take an example in the Philippines. We've got this very unique organization called the Philippine Retirement Agency. Yes. For a small amount of $20,000 in a fixed deposit that is not interest bearing, they will immediately issue you with a retirement visa for yourself, your spouse, and two dependents, which is indefinite. And they <coughs> encourage you to come and live in the Philippines, which is English speaking, offers a lot of the same attractive uh, inputs like India. Warm weather. Warm weather, warm you know, hospitality, etc. So why can't we take something like that, and now that the building industry is in the doldrums, uh, I'm permitted to say that, and we have the infrastructure, we have the nursing manpower, we have the care, we have a secular country where any elder from any country can come and practice whatever spiritual care they have. And the main thing is companionship and care during the golden years of their life. And it's a multi-billion pound industry. It's not small by any means. And you don't need state-of-the-art facilities to set up a care home. So that is one area we should overlook. And of course, uh, as Rajiv said, once we get organized by the suggestions that have been made today, and there is a website, there is a task force, and there is a concerted effort on a G2G basis, if the Indian government is able to talk to the NHS, we will start a pilot program that's a 120 billion pound industry in the UK that is bursting at its seams. If we target just 0.1% of that revenue, we'll all be smiling. And we are here as entrepreneurs and people who run businesses, Indian merchants, you know, altruistic ideals aside, we are here for commercial reasons. So why are we not targeting where the big money is? Uh, I'm, uh, thanks, Mr. Bojwani. I'm going to stay with the NHS for for, for a minute. It, isn't it true that the NHS, uh, the in insurance cover for all people at the yeah. NHS, yes. only covers their treatment within the <coughs> EU? So how does in India hope to get a chunk of that by then? Uh, by legislation and by practice, the NHS has a budget of roughly 120 billion pounds this year, is not able to use state funds to send patients abroad for treatment to a country like India. So it would be a two, three step process where uh, India would be actually offering a cost effective solution to the NHS. And where 20% of the doctors and the nursing staff are of Indian origin, I don't think they would have problem 